Hi everyone, it's Louise with Louise McKayar and I'm doing something a little different today because I was going to share the information and knowledge I've learned in my transition from going from a normal campus size to a larger one, which is a two by three in this case. And then I thought, you know what, let me just do a separate video because I don't hear anybody ever talking about what to think about if you're changing in sizes and what that does in terms of your mentality, your preparation and so forth. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to share with you what I've learned in the last couple days in preparing to do a larger canvas. Okay, so one of the first considerations is knowing that I'm going to a 24 by 36 from this test piece that I did the other day, which is a 14 by 18. Dimensionally, it seems about twice as big, but in fact, if you do the math, it's three and a half times larger in square inches. So knowing that, I've got to calculate out how much paint I'm going to need. So I have a 24 by 36 canvas I'm going to do, which is it's 864 square inches. You divide that by 25, you come out with about 35, roughly, ounces of paint that I need to cover that entire canvas. So over here is the paint. And it took me literally an hour and a half to mix up all these paints. So in each one of these five and a half ounce cups, I have about mm, four, four or so ounces. So between all the paints there, I have a ton of black, more than enough, just to cover the canvas with plus some, probably two. I have a more than enough color as well. I want negative space. So anyway, you get the idea. So this is concern for the room. Now I'm just getting back into the sunroom. I switched sides. I'm on the sunny side now. So I don't want paint slinging all over the place. So I put down a whole bunch of protection there and um, adjusted the height of the camera because it's got to be able to see the larger canvas. And I needed to back up the table so that I can have the painting in focus when I'm videoing and even still it's going to be close. So that was another consideration is adjusting your workspace. What I had before also uh, was this, these two little containers, a little box from Sam's Club and then a, um, another container that I would do use for various sizes that certainly is way too small for that. So I basically had to open up the table. Now my first thought was I'll berm around the table so that I can uh, allow for no spillage. So I had two by fours around the table and it was still wasn't enough room. So I ended up adding little arms, which I'm gonna use and then um, still not big enough. So I ended up extending the back. Just all these things to make sure I'm going to be safe and not make a mess. And then I sat down to try to pick up the canvas. So in having the canvas down, I was like, well, I got to be able to maneuver this thing. Got to be able to tilt and I can't, I can't reach. I can't, I just don't have the arm strength, the arm wingspan. Plus, it's going to have paint on it, so it's going to be heavier. I mean, I could tilt in one direction, then tilt it back, and then tilt in the other, but my hands are going to be on the sides. I don't want to ruin the sides. So I put these little grabbers here, thinking that was going to help. Actually, I started with the eye hooks, thinking I'd be able to hold the eye hooks, but that doesn't help me either. So I put these on, these are coat hangers I cut to size. So at least now, if I have it up, which I have another plan, I'll talk about that in a second, at least I can maneuver this around like this. But then I'm thinking, well, what if I gotta go this way? I'm gonna just be wearing paint all over myself. So needless to say, I had to go to another plan. I was also thinking about, well, maybe I should just do this outside. I'll have more room. If I make a mess, it's not going to be a big deal. 
So the evolution here is I showed my husband the back of the canvas and how I had it taped up and I was going to use this and still had a problem with how to turn it. He says, well, why don't you cut a support piece to go in the middle and, and this is a level two canvas, so I'm kind of surprised it doesn't have that. I guess it's level three where you get the support piece and um, put it on the spinner. So I thought, yeah, that's a kind of a good idea. So I went out to the garage, got the saw, cut 21 inches, laid it in here, took a couple cuts. Just wedges in, not, not too hard, but just snug. And I got out my spinner. And I actually had, for my little alien hex tile, I still had the sticks there. So I was like, let's give it a whirl, literally. Let's give it a whirl. How's this gonna work? Presto, it not only helps me rotate, it not only helps me rotate the canvas, but it helps me get the bottoms so I have accessibility. I just gotta remember to have the main beam in the middle. So that'll work. I'm not too worried about level on this because for the pouring and the stretching, I don't need it to be perfectly level. So I'll take it in, uh, inside and I'll lay it down on the um, on the kitchen table, and it'll be flat. So um, what else? Cups. I was really originally going to do two cups. On this one here, I only needed one cup, and I used about seven ounces. But see. But seeing how this is three and a half times the size, I'm gonna need at least three and a half times the paint, the color paint. So hunting around the house for cups, which I don't have a lot of. So what I'm gonna do, this is the cup that the client purchased for me that I had my caramel macchiato in where we met last uh, a couple weeks ago spent about an hour of really fun it was a very enjoyable conversation um, so I just thought it was apropos to use his cup for the pour and then this is 16 ounces so I'll probably use 13 ounces in here and these two cups are both these are nine ounces I think. So I'll use about eight ounces in each of these. Oh, another thing. I'll be right back. So the other concern was I've never done a flip cup this size. Ever. <laughs> and now that I have a beam in the middle, I'm a little concerned that when I, if I take this weight and I slam it down on top of that cross beam, it's going to pop out and then I'm going to be in a big mess. So I'm going to try I'm going to have a that MDF board underneath here. So somehow So with the MDF board down there, I have support and I'll be able to flip it right on top, and then it'll be solid. The other two flip cups I'm not too worried about because they're smaller, and I can just go like that, and then I can rotate my lovely spinner around and go like and go like that. So that's the idea. So another option I have tomorrow, depending on how I feel, how uh, comfortable I feel with after this is in the cup, uh, flipping it with the MDF board, I could just do this. Take the cup, do this, lay it down, and then slide it off. That's 
Actually, that feels pretty good. Flip, keep it tight, get it down, lay it on the canvas. Boom. I might do that. I think that's better than playing around with the MDF board underneath. The other two, I'm not too worried about. There's going to be much lighter, seven ounces, eight ounces in there. You know, boom. Oh. Mm. I gotta be careful. I'm gonna use my hand. Support. Yeah, I'm realizing I need to use my hand to support because the canvas and my contraption are just too wobbly. Anyway, I'll just do dry run. So I don't want there to be, I know there's already gonna be surprises tomorrow. I just wanna minimize the amount of surprises I have to face with trying to create a canvas here. So there's, there's something in the military that he used to learn. It was called uh, seven Ps or something like that. It was called prior planning prevents piss poor performance. So that's all I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to make sure that this room doesn't get destroyed with paint flying around. I want to make sure I have room to do what I need to do. I want to make sure I have the maneuverability that I want. So I got that. I got the room set up. I've got space. I got my paints. I got my plan. So anyway, I uh, just wanted to share with y'all what I've learned because this has <laughs> been quite a jump in uh, my ability. No, it's a challenge. And that's one thing I will say. I probably had my most significant growths when I've been asked by people to do things. Uh, in January, I had a lady ask if I sell my tiles. Um, and I'm like, well, I guess I can. I hadn't resined anything yet. Uh, obviously, I needed to resin something before I was able to sell it because she wanted coasters. So I learned how to resin. So that lady in Pennsylvania helped me out a lot. And then there was a person in Colorado who liked a swipe style technique and I had never swiped anything before that I ended up doing a two commission piece for her and then actually ended up selling something else to her. And then, um, then this one, this is another big one where uh, I posted on offer up a local thing, uh, some paintings, just to try to lighten my load a little bit and see if I can get my stuff out there. And this one person asked uh, to purchase one of them, which was my black deconstructed bloom. He really liked it. He liked my style. He had watched me on YouTube and so forth. And that's when he approached me about doing something like this. So yeah, I said, sure, I can do it never done something this large but you know what you got to try and when I get to North Carolina I've got big canvases sitting out in the garage waiting for me to work on I gotta get used to doing it sometime so uh, that's what I'm here <laughs> that's what, anyway I just want to take a few minutes to uh, share with you my learning and getting to this point and I big guarantee you I'm not gonna do anything with this today I guarantee you there's gonna be things I didn't realize tomorrow when I do the painting, and I'm gonna say, oh man, need to add that to the video. One thing I will be doing is I will be painting the, uh, the edges here and the sides black to give me a head start before I start painting tomorrow. So at least then I'll have my sides already covered just in case I don't quite get there with a tilt. Just one less thing to think about. I want to be able to focus on creating something really cool for the client and not so much, oh, did I remember this? Did I remember that? I don't want to have something as mundane as how to tilt the canvas become a concern for me. So yeah, that's, that's it. So one more quick thing. Since I'm doing a much larger canvas this time, all I've had before was a small frame and this is 30 inches by 24 inches 10 inches tall that I made and then what I do is I put the uh, 
put the little tarp over the top of, of the canvas to let it dry without allowing any dust to get inside. But since this is a much bigger canvas, I went ahead and made a second frame that I'll get another topper for. Uh, so when I put these two together, the two foot by three foot canvas will fit inside. So yeah, you gotta think about the drying part too before I start the pouring part tomorrow. All right, that's all. Thanks for tuning in, I hope this was helpful. And when you get ready to grow, think about what I just told you here. All right, thanks a lot, take care.